Let's talk about uh, something called parenthetical references. It's on um, page 111 in your textbook. When I was younger doing my own research and uh, being in college and all, we had something called footnotes. And here's how it worked. You'd be reading an article and they would make a claim that they wanted you to know was not their original claim that they had found the information somewhere else. And they put a little raised number, like one or two or three, after the sentence or after the quotation. And you had to look at the bottom of the page, or you had to flip to the end of the chapter, or you had to go all the way to the end of the book and see that raised number there. And then you could find out <clears throat> where did that source, uh, where did that information come from? What was the source? Okay, so that was called footnoting. Bottom of the page, end of the chapter, end of the whole book. And you can probably guess, but it's very disruptive. You read this quotation or you, you read this startling statement and you say, wow, that's interesting. I wonder where that came from. Well, what did, what did you have to do? You had to break your attention at that line and go down to the bottom of the page or even worse, you had to flip to the back of the chapter and try to remember what number was it? Well, it was number three. So you flip back, oh, there's the number three. Or worse than that is go all the way back to the last of the part of the book and try to find the chapter and that footnote number. So years back, the Modern Language Association, that's MLA, that's the organization that sets the rules all across this nation. So it's not just me saying this, this is what is happening in Florida and Minnesota and all over the place. They've replaced that system with something called parenthetical references. So if you look at that word, parenthetical means having to do with parentheses. So here's why it's a much better system now. When you come across something that you did not uh, originate, it's not your idea, you have an interesting quotation or an interesting statistic or whatever, and you want to give credit. If you don't give credit, of course, you're plagiarizing. So you want to give credit. So you tell the reader where you got it, but it's going to go right next to what you just said. Then there's going to be a parenthesis and information in there to let the reader know where you got that information. See, that's a lot better system, isn't it? You don't have to go to the bottom of the page. You don't have to flip over at the end of the chapter. You don't have to go all the way to the end of the book. It's right there. Just you're reading parentheses. Keep reading. Maybe there's another parentheses. So let's talk about how it looks and what, what's going on here. I just said, top of the introduction there on page 111, you have to give credit in your writing to sources that you're using for information and support. So guess where you're going to use this a lot? Your research paper. I'm asking you to at least have one source that you're going to use these parenthetical references for. I said, if second line here, if your support comes from your experiences or common knowledge, don't give credit. Now, the key part there is common knowledge. So let me give you an example. You're reading something and it's talking about Columbus, who sailed over here to America in 1492. And they mentioned that he had three ships, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Now, you might be tempted to say, gee, I didn't know that. Maybe I should give uh, credit and put a parenthetical reference. But as you do research and you keep reading up on Columbus and you keep finding those same three ships and those same three names, even if you didn't know it, that apparently is common knowledge. You don't have to do parenthetical references. But what if you're reading something about Columbus and his trip over and it talks about um, how he interacted with his crew and you didn't discover that in any of your other reading that's specific to that book or that article or that website then all you have to do is put that parenthesis in there give credit to it and you're home free right you've said I didn't generate this idea it came from this source and you give credit for that okay so I said use parenthetical references now I'm about five lines down Use parenthetical references in your text. They have to be placed immediately after every quotation. Immediately after every quotation and at the end of each passage or paraphrase or summary. Okay, so let me explain that real briefly. So you have a quote from Mark Twain. You're going to put this quotation in from Mark Twain. Uh, so Mark Twain once said, da 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 da. And before you move on, that's the end of your quotation. You've got your second quotation mark at the end. Boom, right after that. There you go. Where did you get that quotation? Then you continue with whatever else you want to say. So after every quotation, that's where you immediately have to do your parenthetical reference. But notice what I also said. I said at the end 
of every passage or paraphrase or summary. Okay, so let me explain what that means. So let's go back to our Columbus idea. So you said uh, Columbus interacted in an interesting way with his crew on the voyage over, and you tell a couple of stories, and they take three to four sentences each. You don't have to put parenthetical references after every single sentence. All you have to do is, when you're done with the story, maybe it's five sentences long, eight sentences long, whatever it is, when you're done with the whole story, then you put the parenthetical reference. You see why? I mean, it really would break it up if you kept putting parentheses after every sentence. So you don't have to do that. So that's good news. So it's after every chunk of information, after every summary, after every paraphrase. Okay, so I hope that's helpful to you. I gave you some examples of what they would look like. So let's talk about those. That's in the middle of 111. So you're reading something about John Kennedy, our president. John Kennedy carried on a love affair with a woman who was good friends with a high-ranking member of the Mafia. Now, you didn't hear that anyplace else. You'd say, wow, what's going on there? So you put your parentheses. Do you see that? Smith, what do you think the 157 is? That's the page number that you found this information. Then comes the other parentheses and then the period. Okay, so don't put it outside of the period. It's the information, the parentheses, and then the period. Look at my next example. Go down a little bit. It says, Jane Smith says, comma, quotation marks. So now you're not just putting in your own words. You're going to use the actual words of the author. John Kennedy definitely had a fling with a woman connected to a man high up in the mafia. End of quotation mark. Do you see that? Then 157, and then period. Why don't I have the author's name inside the parentheses? Because I already gave you the author's name, Jane Smith. Okay, so do you see the difference between the two? The first one said Smith, 157, because I didn't tell you her name. Down here, I'm giving her name before the quotation. So all I need inside, after the, after the quotation, inside my parentheses is just the page number. So the, the person who's reading this is curious and wants to find out what the author said, can go to the Smith's book and find out the information. By the way, where is this person going to find the book title? That's going to be in your work cited. Okay, so does that make sense? If you say Smith 157, people can go immediately to your work cited if they're really curious, and they'll read down the list of all your sources you use, and they'll see Jane Smith. And they'll, there'll be the title, and then they can go find that book if they're desperate to know what you were talking about. Um, I said a few rules to keep in mind at the bottom of the page. If you have two authors that wrote a single source, you have to use both last names. So it'll be Jones and Smith, 157. Okay, so you can read through the rest of this. So look what we're talking about here. Obviously, this will only work for sources that have page numbers. You don't put a parentheses for a video and say eight minutes and five seconds. Okay, you don't have to do that. So anything that's a YouTube or a, um, a video that you're watching, if you're doing an interview with somebody, they don't have page numbers. It's a live person that you're sitting there interviewing. So don't worry about it. I'm talking about anything that has page numbers. And all of those academic journals that we've been talking about, they will have page numbers. So that's where you're going to encounter at least one of your sources with page numbers. So I'm not saying all your sources, but at least have one that you'll use these parenthetical references with. Okay, well, email me if you have any questions about this, but uh, I hope it works out okay for you. Thanks.